happened late one night, just on the stroke of two when the winking stars were shining bright. A child was born with a beating heart, a tiny girl, a little lady. Oh, hugs and kisses, a tiny baby. She'll be a grown-up one day too. It's happened, it's happened, it's true, it's true. A tiny person, one of millions, and millions and billions and trillions. Tonight, she started to be. A night to remember for us all three. We're as happy as happy as ever can be. Mom and Dad and Bill, all three. We jumped up and down and hugged each other. Mummy and Daddy and Bill, her brother. We cried for joy and shouted, Yippee! Mum shed tears, believe it or not, for the little lovely girl she'd got. Was it really true, this she was seeing? A wonderful, brand new human being. No one foresaw that marvelous day, what sorrows were on the way. Nothing at home was the same anymore. People brought flowers and knocked at the door. They stood by the cot and murmured a lot of oohs and ahs and oohs and goochie goochie goos. Yes, everyone babbled and crowed and gabbled. Oh, look, what a pearl. What a sweet little girl though she hasn't one single curl. Just like her mum was the opinion of some, but others said, no, she's so like Billy, so. But to Bill, she seemed just wrinkled and tiny, helpless and shiny and fretful, and whiny. For this little girl who's going to grow, mum has to sit and sew and sew. There were clothes to arrange and nappies to change. There were dummies and yummies and towels to dry tummies and bottles of feed. What else could she need? There were belchers and burbles and hiccups and gurgles. Oh, what a fuss we made, all of us. Though to Bill, she was mostly wrinkled and tiny, helpless and new, fretful and whiny. But out in the street, he proudly called, I've got a baby. She's new. She's bald. And his friends came up to the window and gazed. Coo, isn't she tiny? They said, amazed. Now, Bill isn't little anymore. Oh, no, he's bigger and taller and stronger and walks about like a grown-up mister, proud as punch of his baby sister. Though she screams in her cot and mum sews a lot and the nappies, you bet, are always wet. When all's said and done, it isn't much fun. But then they said, it'll all be fine when she knows who's who, what's yours, what's mine. Don't worry, son, by Christmas time we'll all have fun. She settled down and after a while, Bill pushed her pram with a cheerful smile. His sister was like any other little tot, eating and sleeping and growing a lot. Little did he realize then what sorrow she'd bring on them. How could he guess? How could he know? She had a secret, so secret, so. With a pram to push and a pram to pull, Bill's hands were always full. Besides, he had to find her a name, much like others, but not the same. He suggested Mixie, or maybe Trixie, or Silly, or Sally, or maybe Dixie. Dixie, for instance, O'Malley. But then one day, Bill had his say. She's got to have a proper name, one that sounds all soft and round. In a flash, a name he found. Here, little funny, we'll call you 
bunny. Everything started off okay. She grew by night and she grew by day. First she was one, and that was fun. She crept on all fours and babbled indoors. Though not in a hurry, no cause for worry. At two she was walking, but then her talking, words that bubbled and popped, just stopped. And now she's three, no oh dearie me, it's clear to see. She doesn't know one single word. Laughter and babble was all we heard. Bill shouts, bunny, and Bill shouts, hi. Stands upside down, plays the clown. She takes no notice. Why, why? Maybe there's better things to do than listen to me or you. Or people who shout and hiss and frown. She'd rather tear up paper or turn a flower pot upside down. Hola. 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 Ay, 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 ay. Hola. Who do you papa say? Oh dear, oh me, what a shame. Tearing up paper's her only game. Though she's cheerful and jolly, she doesn't love her dolly. Though we shout at the top of our voices, she pays no heed to such noises. Can it be she's simply bothered by us? when we worry and fuss. Maybe there's something wrong with her ears that she never hears. <laughs> Deaf? No way. Her hearing's okay. At a musical beat, Bunny's up on her dancing feet. With a dance or a song, there's nothing wrong. Her hearing's okay. Yes, her hearing's okay. Whatever then can the matter be that none of us can see? We hug her and kiss her and toss her in the air, but she doesn't care. To our dismay, she just turns away. Heavens above, doesn't she want our love? <laughs> Maybe she'd rather be alone than part of our little home. It's very odd when all's said and done. She never looks at anyone. It's as if we none of us were there, or made of air. Bunny, we cry. Hi, Bunny dear. But she never seems to hear. Mum and Dad and Big Brother Billy worry their heads till they're half silly. Doesn't she need their affection or loving protection? How sweet she is when she flashes her lashes and dances and prances. No, it's time we ask the doctor what kind of an illness our bunny's got. Clever people come to our flat, ask about Bunny, her habits, all that. Over the threshold first, good day to her, step the lady curator, followed by trainers and teachers and such. Hello, how are you? It was almost too much. Among all the doctors, not to forget, there was even a vet, and an auntie who came, and a gymnastics dame, with wonder of wonders, two odd bods in train, and even a specialist of no little fame. And doctors whose main concern, it appears, is to study eyesight and inner ears. But no one finds the cause of our fears. Down on the floor, the lady curator does her best to stimulate her, to make less noise and play with her toys. She has no luck, no luck at all. For Bunny won't play with a toy or a ball. No, she doesn't enjoy one single toy. Embracing our Bunny, they look down their noses cudgeling their brains for a diagnosis. How's her temper? Fine, we say. Are you sure she can hear? Yes, we say. Sleeps soundly at night? Goes out like a light. Can she laugh? Not half. Bunny is measured and scrutinized. 
Her diet in detail is analyzed. Her case on paper is finalized. The child at three seems quite carefree, laughs and climbs the stairs and walks, but never talks. No cure is found, not a word of hope. Wait until autumn and try and cope. They pucker their brows and mummy trembles. Her child, no other child resembles. No amount of examination offers a sensible explanation. Just wait and see. What will be, will be. Springtime comes and springtime goes. Only her hair just grows and grows. Dad falls silent, and Billy sees Mum is pale and ill at ease. Now Bill's in the dumps himself as well. What's wrong with his sister? Can no one tell? For it seems she's come to a stop up top. She's knotted up in a little knot. Nothing happens, no sign of change. It's really very, very strange, is it not? And now it's four and the doctor comes and sits in the kitchen and hars and hums. In solemn words that hang in the air, Bunny, he says, is in need of care. Yes, that in a word is what he says. In a world of her own, she spends her days. A child who cannot think ahead is what he said. That's what he said. A child whose thought is so very short is a child of a very special sort, but is easily left aside, he said. And Billy cried. His sister will never be clever, never smart and never wise, a little loony in others' eyes. Something snaps, the pain's too much. What do you mean? Is she crazy, perhaps? Don't tell us, please. Don't tell us, no. We won't believe our child is... It can't be so. Not our bunny, no. Our own, our darling little bunny. We shan't give up for love or money. All our hopes go down the drain in a cry of pain. Never shall we hope again. Bunny's not like you or me, and will never be. All our joy is gone forever. Never can we grasp it. Never, never. Why bunnies be made so differently, unalterably. We all of us cried. What a mournful sound. Granny and Grandpa and others around, neighbors and all the friends we'd kept, just wept and wept. To think she'll never talk or sing. Poor little thing. Poor little thing. What tears, what sorrow for bunnies tomorrow. We cried all day and we cried all night over her tragic plight. <laughs> Till Bill one day looked up and shouted, Well, what about it? Bunny's not unhappy at all. Seems to me she's having a ball. And we opened our eyes, and to our surprise, to our delight, we see our Billy's perfectly right. Bunny is happy, if not very bright. Which, with all those tears in our eyes, we didn't realize. Billy was right. Bless him for seeing. Bunny's happy simply being, all day long and every day. What's wrong with that, oh say? But though we cried for Bunny's sake, isn't it our hearts that ache? 
why give way to misery just because she's a mystery? Bunny has her own sort of mind, one of a very secret kind. So what on earth are we crying for? Not for Bunny anymore. Bunny's not me, Bunny's not you, Bunny's something entirely new. She's no cause for grief or sorrow. Bunny's a secret, like tomorrow. Many such secrets there must be, hidden from you and me. A thousand days, perhaps, there are to search and scan the sky for some new planet or distant star and wonder why. He who really looks may find something of some other kind. A thousand days, and no one knows what's yet to come. No one knows, not one. Bunny is going to be four today. She's big enough, but her brain's astray. Presents here and presents there. Some are round and some are square. Guess what Bunny likes the best? Why, the wrappings, of course. She ignores the rest. <laughs> Big Brother Bill's gone out and bought something to please her only thought. He isn't caught napping. Bill's brought her a parcel of wrapped up wrapping. to do. There's coffee to brew and steps to clean too. Pots and pans and knives and forks and saucepans to polish and flowers on stalks. Dad goes out to beat the mat. Mum's forgotten to feed the cat. The clock needs mending. The ironing's unending. And oh dear, oh dear, the guests are here. And the phone rings too. Oh, what it to do? <laughs> but what's it all for? Suddenly we stop and see. There she sits, as still as still can be, surrounded by paper, is she? She's not like us. No rush, no fuss. We're all supposed to be terribly smart. But what goes on in her little heart? Billy knows from long experience what a gift she has for interference. What a fine castle this will be. Billy's building so carefully. Brick by brick with steady hand, the finest fortress in the land.
potted plants are very good for making a wood. And on its topmost tower, a flag like a flower. shots you stupid thing why must you ruin everything why can't you play oh go away I'm sick and tired of everything Billy's so mad he'd like to hit her or break her dolly he's so bitter but where would be the sense in it she doesn't even cry when hit. She doesn't love her doll one bit. There's no way to tease her or even displease her. All he can do is sit and seize and hold his hand and mutter through his teeth. Oh, why can't you understand? Mum, I don't want a sister like Bunny, nor I such a daughter, sighs his mummy. And I wish her eyes were blue, not grey, and I wish the rain would go away. But they aren't, and it won't, and there's nothing more to say. Wishing's a game we can all play. I wish the sky was white as snow, and the sun a brilliant blue, and winter and spring were summer too, and grown-ups would only grow. But the sky is eternal, unending, and blue. And the clouds go sailing by. And everything's made the way it is. Only we go about and wish. Look at the flowers. They don't complain. They like the sun as much as the rain. So it was a miracle after all. That night when Bill, who's now so tall, got a sister unlike others that come to other brothers. A little girl without reason or rhyme, yet who laughs and is happy all the time. Happy or sad, this tale is true. How you see it is up to you.